to the GKC show, everybody. Uh, I am Mark Lombardi, and we are here again with our co-host Sam Whitaker. And this week's special guest is Silas, uh, I, AKA Entrekin, uh from the GKC Lounge. Uh, and yeah, the Twitter Spaces. Yeah, the and big reveal. Yes, exactly. we are doxing. Awesome. You will Welcome never be back. able to get away from the public now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, it's it's kind of interesting that the whole Entrekin like alter ego thing like never it just sort of accidentally happened i never really intended to to kind of remain anonymous but i mean in this space it's it's kind of uh it's kind of funny how like much that's a thing um so it was kind of fun to, to play around with that but yeah, yeah I don't know big if you, reveal. I don't know if you saw the houdini episode but he went all complete deep throat on it so. yeah yeah I, and i love that like you know because there, there's like all sorts of you know there's all sorts of perspectives on it and you know there's no wrong answers here well, the, you know, yeah. these alter, these alter egos start to emerge and then you get to know people by their screen names as opposed to their real names. And there's so many people in this space that I don't know the real name. <laughs> well, it was the thing of Wagner when we all met. It was like, oh, wait, you're Houdini? Oh, yeah. Houdini? okay. That's what that means. Your name is. Ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So but I understand his wanting to stay anonymous because he's not very good looking. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, Houdini's got a special place in, uh, you know, in Headwind Labs lore. I mean, he created our logo. So special props to him. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that was really, uh, he, you know, he didn't need to do that. But uh, he's such a talented guy. Yeah, he's yeah, a really super is. helper. He did, uh, Sam, he did uh, your thing for your launch for holding yeah. these nuts and he did the intro for uh for this the little animation that runs at the beginning of it yeah so yeah always thanks are to are we recording or are we just talking i don't know what's, what's happening right now <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're again kissing houdini's ass i don't know exactly how this happens every show but <laughs> Uh, but so Silas, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Headwind Labs? And uh, by the way, if anybody's wondering why I have a hurricane behind me, it is hurricane season, and Headwind Labs is blowing in here. So yeah, smash like buttons yeah. while Silas is telling us all about what. Yeah, Headwind they can't, Labs. Uh, can't take mm -hmm. any responsibility for any of the hurricanes going on right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and if anybody's wondering why I have blinds in my background, I'm at a conference in Wyoming trying to push Hedera on some fintech people. Cool. So. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So Headwind Labs, we, um, yeah. my, my co-founder Nardbard and I, um, I guess I'll dox him too. His name is Brian. Um, we, we've always been, our background is in, in software and enterprise software. We've worked for big tech companies. Um, and we kind of knew that we wanted to do something together. Um, and you know, our interest, our shared interest has always been in how systems connect and, and talk to each other and how you achieve like higher level outcomes by bringing data from different uh, systems together. And so, you know, when we started digging into to blockchain and, and some of the things that were going on, it just seemed like a really natural fit for our um, sort of background and interests uh, to be able to, to build something that, that allows people to get more meaning out of, of the blockchain. Um, yeah, it's so, so cool that you kind of you did that organically and just kind of on your own, and then everybody realized the value in it. Yeah, and that's sort of the beauty of of Web three and, and the space that you know the this, the data is so open and available that that we were able to do that. Um, you know, that it wasn't a closed off system where you know we had to ask for somebody's permission to get access to the data just to be able to try to innovate with something, we, you know, we could just start doing it and offering it directly to the community and, and ultimately got some traction with it because of that. Um, so that was really cool kind of how that was even possible. Uh, yeah, I'm actually interested in uh, the kind of nuts and bolts of it. Is it a pure web three solution or are you just pulling from OpenSea and LuxRare's APIs? Uh, it's all of it. It's, it's, um, it, it's really, you know, kind of taking the, the systems that are out there that have APIs, whether they're considered web two or web three kind of doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it, it's data that's in one system kind of combined and put in context with, with data that, that brings meaning to it. Um, and so, you know, specifically in the, in the GKC, um, case, we were looking at like, we've got these Genesis keys, you can use them to make profiles. Uh, just being able to answer the question of like, how many profiles are left 
to mint on a certain key is like, that's something that people, everybody needs to know, but it wasn't easy to find that answer. And so just, just sort of like providing a tool that puts those two things together was like, you know, pretty powerful for folks. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I we all remember back in the days when, uh, you know, you would basically refresh on OpenSea. You'd see a new <laughs> listing and you go to the NFT.com app and see how many profile mints were left. And then you have to run back over real quick and make sure exactly. that you're there. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're the saving grace of Discord that takes Discord from being a complete time suck to actually saving some time <laughs> by being in there. <laughs> I have this love-hate relationship with Discord, and you seem to be quite the master of it in being able to pull all of these things into it and put things into it and all that I, kind of stuff. I, I, I think everybody has that same view of Discord, of, of it, of kind of begrudgingly using it. It's like, God, this tool is not the right tool for what we're trying to do, but like, let's make the best of it. Yeah, it's um, the best tool for yeah. what they're right. And as a, you know, I'm finding that it's so much more as I'm starting to develop a community that it's so much easier to communicate with that community in Discord than it is on Twitter, because so much of Twitter is just lost to, to open yeah. air. To... Yeah, yeah, and I, and I find that they're different. Um, they're for different purposes. You know, if you think about Twitter as being sort of that the top end of, of a funnel of trying to attract you know, and sort of inform new potential members, community members about what you're doing and what, what you know, what you're trying to do and, and funneling them, you know, collecting them from Twitter and kind of getting them into your community. Now you engage with them in Discord yeah. um, or, or other tools. Yeah, yeah I mean, you different, sorry, go ahead, sir. Uh, I was just wanted to hit one more time on the tool that it's so, <laughs> whenever there's a, a good key with a lot of mints and a good price comes up, it is a mm -hmm. mad, dash to get it it's between uh h bar nfts and brock and me anytime something under <laughs> three or four profiles i mean they're gone in three minutes tops yeah yeah it's it's kind of a, it's cool to see especially that um you know just that that time gap in particular you can almost anticipate like you, you see the listing and then you're like okay let me just watch this let me just watch this and then like bam sale um so you can yeah. you can also, I, I almost just, just anticipate it yeah, I imagine Brock's just sitting at the gym, just like he's got his, <laughs> got his iPad up there. And as soon as a, uh, um, you know, a profile or a key comes up, he just, you know, drops the dumbbells and he's right on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's really the kind of thing that accelerates community, you know, the, the economy within a community. It just allows it to, right, because it takes so many man hours to do all of the research in order to get the final product that you have without it. Um, that it just makes those purchases happen so much faster and so that so that the uh, economy that whatever economy it's in is able to accelerate. So where yeah, where yeah, do you absolutely. where do you see it going from here? What, what other kind of stuff do you, do you want to do with headwinds? Yeah, um, we really see so our you know who we're targeting is really the Alex of the world. So the community manager um who's there you know he's you know i mentioned that funnel of, of sort of moving collecting folks you know informing them about what's going on in a community getting them interested in a project activating them like you know they've actually you know maybe bought a, a membership token mm -hmm. now they're engaged and finally they're they're committed this is uh something that i read a, a twitter thread from uh gregariously uh dot eth i think is the ceo of, of zealous app um that really uh kind of highlighted that that sort of effort to to kind of move people through that process and and alec like he's kind of on his own right now in in doing that he's he's out there like fighting the good fight but he doesn't have really good tooling to be able to to understand what's going on like how many new members joined my community this week you know how did they how did they how did they come to know about us um, you know, how many people left, how many people sold out of, of my community versus like they were just flipping. And so what we're aiming to do is really to, to provide him and other community managers, like almost like a set of tools that are, are like superpowers that he can use to really understand what's going on with my community. And so that might be tools that he can then, you know, turn around and offer as, you know, bots and things that help, help, help his community to, 
to function in their environment to know what's going on. And it might be more like internal facing statistics and sort of uh, events that he needs to know about so that they can take action and make decisions uh, to really grow and manage their community. So, yeah, so you're, sorry, you're, right. you're you really working that. with the community managers then to come up with essentially the key performance indicators for whatever their goals and objectives are, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. That's right. really cool. Yeah. And then also provide front facing thing um, tools to the community. That's a really good uh, kind of two pronged attack. Yeah, because I think that um, they really need both. Like they 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 need people to be able to know what's going on. They need folks in the community to be um, informed about the events that they care about that they might want to take action on, in order to kind of keep them engaged and and keep. Um, kind of moving towards their higher level goals, they have to, to constantly inform people. And so whether that's, you know, just providing like, you know, regular updates, I love to see that they're doing the Twitter space this week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know when this is going to air, but it's going to be tomorrow. Um, yeah, so we'll uh, air today's we'll, time. <laughs> yeah, we'll probably air a couple of hours before the actual Twitter. We'll, go, we'll probably air around noon tomorrow. Perfect. Um, so, you, you know, that, that. that need to like constantly inform people um, in, in, in sort of a, to allow them to be engaged, to enable them to be engaged is, is um, just super important. And so things like the bots that, that just let people know what's, what's listed, what's for sale, what's sold um, is, is just another, like you said, Sam, like one of those prongs um, that enables them to, to do that. Yeah. Now, speaking of Twitter, so you, uh, your bots are now providing uh, or have a, their own Twitter page as well. And that's specifically for profiles, not keys, right? That's right. Yeah, we, we started, um, you know, kind of worked with Alec uh, and, and the team to, to figure out like what they wanted to start with. Um, you know, profiles is, is really important to what NFT.com is doing and, and sort of the, the, the space that they're building, the platform that they're building. And so being able to use Twitter to amplify um, and increase the visibility of profiles um, was something that was really important to them. Um, and so, yeah, we, you know, we scrambled a bit to, to build in support for Twitter, um, but ultimately, you know, the same framework that's driving our, our ability to produce custom alerts to Discord is now driving those uh, custom alerts to, to Twitter. It's so funny how we're gonna look back on this in years uh, to come when we have like many new uh, community members and all of us who were here at the beginning remember waiting for Entrekin's spreadsheet to come out and doing a quick search down of, you know, and then you started sorting them by uh, uh, <laughs> what is value for per profile or price per yeah. profile. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, we're inventing, we're all inventing the wheel uh, for Web3 at this point. So totally, you know, yeah. Your, I think your tools are going to be very valuable for other communities as well, um, and and other things that you can build because everybody's trying to. I mean, it comes down to analytics essentially for the back end, and <clears throat> like you said earlier, all the data is out there, um, and there's a lot of people building things. I was talking with a guy from a capital um, management company a few weeks ago, and. He was talking about kind of his future of web, what he thought web three was. And he said, there's so many people out there that are building things and some of them are going to stick. Some of them are not going to stick. Some of them are going to work together. And that's kind of going to be how web three evolves. And it's a good spot to be in because there's so much innovation going on out there. But um, yeah, I mean, I think any at the end of the day, once the kind of easy money of, of a launch passes by, you have to figure out how everybody's got to monetize this stuff. Uh, you know, we're not in it for purely altruistic purposes. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, those analytics are going to be crucial. Yeah, they're going to be, people are going to need things that look like standard business tools in order to create businesses that generate revenue. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. Um, and even, you know, looking back to, to some of those days you mentioned, Sam, on, on how we got started with some of those market snapshots and, and things like that, like, so many of those ideas about what we built came from the community. Like, you know, folks just like, hey, this is cool. It would be awesome if it also did this. And it's like, oh, 
that's a great idea. <laughs> We're going to go make it do that. Um, and so, you know, that's another, you know, sort of just benefit of, of um, or kind of upside about this community-based Web3 kind of ecosystem is how collaborative it is in in the way these tools evolve and we kind of build together. Um, so it's something that we're really excited about. Now, Silas, you you were beta testing the the, the tools with NFT.com. Are you working with any other communities? Uh, we the tools yet? We're in talks. Uh, we're in talks right. with a few other communities um, about nice. potentially providing them similar tools, and we're you know actively seeking um, referrals to any other projects. Um, so, you know, if you're out there, your listener base, like we'd, <laughs> we'd absolutely love, you know, any, uh, referrals to projects or community managers that, that you might have in your network, or you just think might, um, you know, benefit from, from what we're able to do. And we can put um, some links down below, uh, in the, uh, in the description, if you'd like, just send us after, definitely. after we record. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, but NFT.com has been a really great partner, um, you know, as we're sort of finding our way and, and, and finding our footing um, because they've, you know, I think they've two things like they've really benefited from what we've provided and mm -hmm. at the same time kind of given us a space to innovate and 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 be comfortable with the fact that like we don't have we don't have everything built out yet. You know, we don't have handle every type of listing from every marketplace. You know, there's certain types of transactions that we still need to build support for. Um, and just being comfortable that like, yeah, things are incomplete, but they're, we're going to support you in, in kind of, you know, building with us. So that's been really, um, it's been uh, great to work with them. And that's a great roadmap for developers who are starting out in the space. Just go build something, build something you think is going to be useful. You may, if you have the time, you may not have a budget for it initially, but build something that's going to be useful, throw it out there. And I mean, it's a perfect use case for how to get started in Web3. Right. You know, yeah. if you have a little bit of knowledge and have a little bit of hustle, um, you know, you can start, you too could be the next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sign up for it, right? <laughs> Buy our book. <laughs> Wait, there's more. Um, but no, it's a great roadmap for for developers and people starting out. You know, just go build something, yeah. Get it yeah. out there, and you know, hopefully have some utility. And then, uh, to your point, talk to the community, figure out what they like, figure yeah. out what they yeah. don't like. I mean, you have and NFT.com is doing this. They're you know companies that are building software in uh, you know enterprise level software in the Web two world. They pay a lot of money for beta testers. They pay a lot of money for people who are going to be active and trying to break the system and uh you know nft.com has that community built in so we're all doing it mm -hmm. and yeah it's a really mm -hmm. cool way to develop but yeah if, you know like i said if you're a young developer out there um number one smash the like button and <laughs> after that um, go build something and find a community where you think it'll have some utility yeah hashtag go build something i like that <laughs> that's a good sure. one sure. so copyright so so we have uh, we have this uh, nft.com Twitter meeting coming up tomorrow. Do we want to speculate at all about uh, what, what might do we think? So I had posted something in the GKC lounge. Uh, I don't know if it was it might have been in the actual just general chat, um, but asking like, is this going to be a meeting in which it's new information for the Twitter community? Or is this stuff going to be new information also for the GKC, which has like a little backstage pass for for each of the weekly or biweekly meetings? I mean, personally, I would imagine this is more of kind of an introduction, um, you know, because all of the everything has been limited to the GKC members for, mm -hmm. so far. And this is going more broad. So I think it's an opportunity for Jordan and I think Don can be on there and I forget who else to kind of introduce themselves and talk a little bit to the a broader community of people and people who can watch it, the recording or listen to the recording. Yeah. Um, yeah, in my mind, I mean, they may throw out a couple new things, um, but yeah, I think it's ultimately a good thing to get more visibility on NFT.com. Yeah, this is pulling back the curtain for the general public and in, in the Twitter community yeah. to be able to see what's what we've all been watching unfold so far. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think that, you know, they're, they're at a point where they've got something, um, you know, they've, they've been making steady progress. 
with the platform and, and iterating with the GKC. Um, and now it's it's time to to open it back up and and sort of you know tell it to to a wider audience and and try to to build that excitement and interest um, and you know generate more visibility and and sort of awareness about what they're doing at a, at a wider level now. That's a good way to put it. I mean, there's a there there now uh, because yeah. when, when it's just kind of speculation and an idea, there's only so many, uh, you know, blind idiots like us who are going to keep following along <laughs> with the, the hope and belief that something's going to come Ooh, of it. Uh, shiny key. <laughs> um, but yeah, now there's something there. So I think it's a, it's obviously all a step to, you know, these are steps in the roadmap towards a public launch um and i think we should all be excited about it the more you know our the more people who are involved the more valuable our keys are the more valuable our um our profiles are and uh you know the more people we can bring into whatever our dow is going to look like so silas have you had an opportunity to play around with the last update where they've gone live with the marketplace stuff have you had a I have, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts um, on that? I haven't had a chat. I've played around with it, but I haven't gotten anything working in that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I see the pieces coming together. Um, you know, I, I think that um, with a with the marketplace sort of set of functions, like it makes total sense. Like they kind of have to have that. Um, I think where I'm where I'm excited to see it it potentially go is, is beyond the marketplace and bring in more of that social aspect mm -hmm. that I think they have this real potential to be more of an engaging platform. Um, and so it's, it's marketplace, but it's also engagement around, you know, these different things. And, and um, I, what I think that they have a really unique, uh, what, what they're doing with profiles in particular is interesting is in allowing people um, to sort of build these themed profiles, showcase NFTs that they don't own themselves, but be able to build out a profile. Um, and you can kind of see how that could be leveraged to sort of build a more engaging platform. Because if you go to, to other marketplaces like OpenSea or, or some of the others, it, it's like, who uses this? Like, yeah, I don't see any evidence that people are actually on here doing stuff. You know, there's transactions that happen, there's people clicking buy and, and list and everything. But there's no excitement. There's no energy yeah, about like, hey, like so and so just bought this, and I'm going to add a comment and be like, woohoo, like <laughs> there. And so I think that that that's where um, NFT.com has you know a, an opportunity to do something pretty exciting with um, with the marketplace. It's like marketplace plus, um, and so I'm I'm really excited to see that plus. That's a really really good way to put it because I mean if you think about like our at least my personal interactions with OpenSea. I go to OpenSea to get something specific. So I see one of your updates and I say, oh, that's a profile I want, or oh, I want that yeah. key, or I have to be Brock or whatever. <clears throat> and um, you go there specifically, you do your do what you have to do, and then you know, you're out. And then you're uh, out. Yep. Kind of like the difference between how you know going somewhere and shopping or going somewhere and buying. So shopping, you look around, you find things, uh, and you know, maybe you see something that you weren't particularly looking for, but you like yeah. it, you got it. Uh, yeah. Whereas buying, you go in, you get your thing, and you leave. Like you yeah. the grocery store. It's it's discovery. So if I can discover yes. something because I'm engaged on a platform and I, I find something that I wouldn't have found otherwise um, that I now want to buy, like that's that's a solving a new problem, a, a net new problem that OpenSea and the other marketplaces I don't think are solving very well right now. No, and it takes out a, a couple steps also because I mean, if you think about how you find out about projects, you hear about something on Twitter, you go to their Discord, you find out more information, and then you end up at OpenSea to to buy one. Whereas bringing in the social aspect, you have the opportunity to have a one stop shop, which is what they're trying to build is a one stop shop for all things NFT. So you go in, you talk to some people, here's some. Um, projects that are trending or, uh, you know, some things people are talking about, and then you're right there, you buy it. Right. So do we think we'll see like a, a social experience, like what we have, uh, what there is on Discord right now, kind of being into, incorporated into it? Or do you see it looking more like a traditional Twitter type of social experience? 
What do you guys think as far as, because it, it definitely feels like we're going to have social integration as part of the fabric of NFT.com. Um, so, so what did you say? The fabric? fabric. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug. Exactly. Yeah. I'll, I'll, dro I'll drop you those H bars after we're done. Very cool. Um, so yeah, I, just a little conversation about where we think uh, that might go. Yeah, I, I think it, it, could potentially go in in either direction for me personally um i i like if it ends up just being discord um i think i'd be a little bit disappointed um right i think you know there there needs to be kind of a new a new angle um that allows that discovery and, and excitement and engagement to occur um but i i don't I mean, I don't necessarily know what that will, will yeah. look like. Yeah, <laughs> so I, don't I think necessarily... that's part of the, the thing that needs to be, um, that we need to figure, figure out. Yeah, I don't necessarily want it to look like Discord, but I think that it will very likely achieve a lot of the same goals that Discord is currently achieving for projects. Right, the I mean, question well, will be, I... do you really need to manage a Discord and NFT.com or will NFT.com be able to, yeah. you know, I think that's a really that you that's a good way of looking at it. Um, that if if the, a community can operate uh, and kind of achieve the same outcomes, and they didn't need Discord, um, but they used you know something like if they used NFT.com, then yeah, that I would say they've been successful. Cool, like, clearly. And I think another um, aspect that at least I think is going to be a part of it is some kind of a reward system or some kind of a. For sure. um, you know i mean what they have so you know already with the you know leaders of nft holders we have you know block fisher the nft hoarder of all hoarders <laughs> and um but yeah some kind of uh you know some kind of standing within the dow or uh you know you can earn genesis keys or i i, I don't know what it would be but you know something that that or you know maybe something like reddit maybe that's what it ends up being like more something like a real-time reddit where mm -hmm. uh you know you can earn <clears throat> points or something like that um yeah i mean i personally i would i think there are good pieces of all of those social platforms and i would love to see nft.com kind of take the best of each and put it together into something new i'd be pumped for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think we all would yeah. yeah that's why we're all that's why we're all you know continually hanging out in discord hoping that that comes together well, I think I think we'll see some growth now that we're starting to reach out into Twitter and, and open up. Uh, I'm wondering if this might be like the announcement of not that they'll open the gates to the general public at this point, but this might be tomorrow might be the point that they let people know the announcement of the announcement. We will very <laughs> soon at this date, we'll be opening up the gates for, for the general public to be able to come in and in profiles and, and be a part of the experience. And that's when things start getting exciting when, cause this is really, uh, in an empty warehouse before the rave starts kind of right now. <laughs> we're, we're all arriving at the party at eight o'clock, eight, 8 PM. And it doesn't really get bumping until midnight kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. Nice analogy. Um, I mean, and there's a lot of open questions there. I mean, there's still a lot of keys that aren't minted, even excluding the ones that are in the treasury. Um, I actually just saw for the first time in a while on the uh, Discord bot that uh, somebody minted off of the site for the full uh, 0.9 ETH. So, right. Yeah, it, uh, it had been a while uh, since the last one. So that was good to see that we got one. Yeah, Ooh. we got one. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many is it left? Can we go to can we go to the the headwinds bot and <laughs> yeah we have a stat for that yeah um and then you know what happens with the ones in the treasury um so it would obviously you know your your analogy of opening up the floodgates i mean maybe you know it just happens and you know all of a sudden the floor disappears on uh open sea and the only place to get pro get keys is is through the website we'll see if that happens, then we're all going to wish we had bought a whole lot more of these, like 0.3 and 0.4 ETHs. <laughs> we we have only got so, yeah, everybody's pockets are only so deep to be able to just keep buying the dick. But yeah, well, well, so we're wrapping up uh, on time here. Uh, but is is there anything else uh, anybody has that they want to say? Plug anything? Uh, quick topic? Anything? 
Uh, well, I just appreciate the opportunity to come on here. Um, you know, I lo love what you guys are doing. You know, we, we talked about how these tools, you know, just get built, it's like just go, go build something like, um, you know, and you guys are, are doing exactly that with, with building up this show and, and sort of your following. So um, appreciate the opportunity to come on and, and chat with y'all. Yeah. And on that yeah. note, like, follow, subscribe, <laughs> all of those wonderful yeah. things. And Sam, I think, has something to say about his nuts. Uh, <laughs> well, before that, I think, honestly, the most important thing, one of the most important things we hit on today was was kind of getting out there and doing stuff. Um, and, you know, Silas, you, did, you guys did a great job of that. And I really want to hammer that point home for, you know, anybody who's watching and wants to get involved in Web3 or wants to, you know, just do something, just show up, uh, you know, what's the, I think it's a Napoleon quote, first we show up and then we see what happens. Uh, just showing up is half the battle, seriously, just put something yeah. out there and see what happens. You never know what it'll turn into. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm out in Wyoming, just meeting with some people talking about my project and other potential projects and you never know who you're going to meet or what you're, what you're going to get into. So get out there. You are getting around there for sure, Sam. So thank you thank very you. much for doing stuff like that for the community and That's spreading word and, uh, and all that good stuff. And we have a, I have a little bit of a plug as well. Uh, Tangle of Words has a, a game that uh, takes place on Twitter at Tangle of Words uh, is the is the username for, for the Twitter uh, project. And it's a game uh, you can go play. It's a creative writing game. And this week's uh, we got the blessing of G Love. Uh, to do one of his songs uh, as our game. So uh, he's nice. kind of involved in it a little bit, not not necessarily in an officially capa official capacity, but I was chatting with him and he said, gave me the thumbs up and he said, this is cool, yeah, do it. Um, so excited about that. And yeah, uh, that's yeah, pretty so cool. Follow along on Tangle of Words as we start to build that project out. I also purchased this past week uh, nft.com slash tangle. So whenever Hedera support comes along for nft.com, we'll slide that right in there as well. Nice. We could not go through an entire episode. I, we couldn't. I couldn't do it. it. I have to I put it in right there at the end. Just All keep right. saying it over and over again. Eventually it'll happen. I get, you know, I'm, I'm manifesting uh, the reality. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, Silas, for being on here. Thank you very much, Sam, for joining us again. Thank you, everybody, for watching us. Uh, and uh, we will see you next week in, in the GKC Lounge. All right. Everybody. Peace. Thanks, all.